Hello and welcome to another video edition of the Collaboration Space podcast. And today we're going to be talking about hybrid learning technology. And to help me do that, I have two special guests from Crestron. I have John Hewlin. Hello, John. Thanks for having me, Nancy. Thank you. Thanks for joining us today. And also from Crestron, I have Bill Strupp. Welcome, Bill. How are you today? Hey, Nancy. How are you guys today? I'm doing good. And as I mentioned, we're going to talk about hybrid learning technology today, and we can't bring that up without talking about the CARES Act because some of that funding is still available. And John, I think you said you had some updates for us on that. Can you share? Last year, the federal government passed the CARES Act, and uh, it actually had stimulus for schools for education technology. In uh, December, they passed another stimulus package uh, most people refer to it as CARES Act 2.0. And actually, even just a couple of weeks ago, they passed the American uh, Relief uh, Stimulus. So there's actually been several billion dollars injected into the uh, educational institutions at all levels, higher ed, at, at K through 12, um, public and private institutions, community colleges, and so on. But the, the express purpose for the money is first student aid to help out students in, in the difficult time, but then educational technology. So, so the schools and educational institutions are allowed to use uh, the money for anything that really helps uh, engage students either remotely uh, for distance learning or remote learning or enhancing the in-classroom engagement. So there's there's a lot of room to use Crestron products uh, with some of the CARES Act money if it can really help your students, the faculty and staff. So that's kind of about, a little bit about what it is. And there's really three buckets. There's the um, the HERE, which is the higher education, and then the ESSER, which is elementary and secondary education, and then there's the GEAR, which is the government, uh, the, the state governor gets to direct it to different institutions in each state. So uh, out of all three of those, there's um, a lot of money and, and funding flowing into the schools that they can use. It's a lot of acronyms flying around, but I'm sure we can help our customers make sense of it all. And Bill, I want to go over to you for a minute. Can you share with us some of the technologies that you've been seeing in these new hybrid learning scenarios? Uh, good question, Nancy. We've seen a lot of different Crestron uh, families of solutions uh, be utilized in education. Uh, the first one that comes to mind is the uh, AirMedia 2. Um, this has been a real popular solution in the education market. Um, it brings in wireless presentation as well as automation into uh, classrooms as well as conference rooms. Um, in fact, I think recently one of the schools in Florida uh, put one in every classroom and uh, used it for all of their laptop presentations. Uh, and don't forget, we do have a promotion right now where the end user can purchase the AirMedia 200 for $550 with an upgrade. And Bill, how long will that promotion last? That one is going to run through the end of May, so act soon. Another family of uh, Crestron solutions that have been popular in school are the Flex uh, family of products. Uh, the Flex solutions can support Zoom uh, rooms, they can support Microsoft Teams rooms, and they can also support BYOD uh, conferencing technology. Uh, and that's kind of the beauty of Flex, is it gives them the, uh, the people the ability to put that into a room to allow the student who's at home to feel like they're in class uh, with the rest of the team. And uh, we've seen many schools deploy these in conference rooms and classrooms. And uh, one school in Colorado deployed over 300 of these uh, to help with the uh, distance learning. And Bill, I know that teachers and students were sent home, you know, in a hurry, you know, over a year ago now, and schools had to put unified communications systems in place quickly, and it may not be the best option or they may want to change. Can you talk a little bit about how Flex can support the different systems such as Microsoft Teams, Zooms, Cisco, and Google? Sure, we've revamped the Flex lineup, uh, the Zoom rooms, uh, if you buy a Zoom room Flex system, uh, if the end user decides to move from Zoom to Microsoft Teams, um, that system can be reconfigured to support Microsoft Teams. And again, we also have uh, systems that also can support uh, universal uh, conferencing platforms. 
So it sounds like there are a lot of options. And also I'm thinking that some teachers may need to bring their video solutions with them from room to room, or teachers may need to share those solutions. How can Crestron help with mobile solutions? Great question. That's actually our Flex R system. Those are our cart-based systems. Uh, those are perfect for quick deployments, um, easy to get these things out. They come essentially put together, two wires to connect to the wall. Uh, these can be put, moved from room to room very easily. Uh, and we've seen even a, a leading medical research university buy dozens of these to do that exact thing where they can move these to the rooms where they need to have a distance learning room. Well, we've talked about funding options and a lot of technology solutions. John, can you share with us where someone can go to learn a little bit more about this if they want to review all this information? Yeah, we have a... Um... We have two two resources. One is a, a presentation we give that really kind of breaks down a little bit more about uh, both who you could maybe contact at your university or your school uh, that might have information on whether you're getting CARES Act funding. And, and then even um, that has some top solutions, for instance, the, the items that really help uh, remote learning happen. Uh, and and then we also have a frequently asked questions sheet, which kind of is a short PDF, but it goes through all the, the significant bullet points with a few dates and, and again, um, some recommendations on websites and helpful links. So we also have a few uh, possible design guides that could help as maybe thought starters. There's an educational workspace application design guide and an AV framework design guide, which is more of the web-based configuration solution. And uh, so we'll be talking about those and I think more on, on the resources that we offer at the upcoming uh, AVISPL Vibe show. So um, that's coming up pretty quick. That is true, John. Thanks for bringing that up. ADISPL is hosting our next Vibe Education Trade Show on May 19th and 20th, and I'll be sure to add that registration link to these video notes as soon as it's available. I want to thank John and Bill for joining me today. Thanks for having us. We appreciate it. Thanks for having us, Nancy, and thanks for being great partners. You're very welcome, and thank you both for sharing all that wonderful information. And I also want to thank our listeners for tuning in today. And I'll see you next time in the collaboration space.